Good morning, y'all. Welcome to worship on this Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2021. We're glad that you're here to worship with us in this way. Would you join us in this morning's call to worship? You are with us, God of sunrises. You awaken us with each bright new day, overflowing with promise. You are with us, inviting God. Calling us to respond to all the chances to share the spirit of love and compassion. You are with us, glory of God. Gathering us into the presence of your peace, listening to the deep sighs of our hearts. Let us worship together. Good morning. Please join me in a word of prayer. Holy and gracious God, we thank you for another day. God, today we bring to you our burdens and our cares that you said we can cast upon you. Thank you, God, for a new day that we have never seen before and that we will never see again. God, I ask that you would touch each and every person um, who is watching this morning, that you would meet them right where they are, that you would give them comfort if they need comfort, that you would give them a peace that surpasses all understanding. And God, that you would allow them to encounter you in a new way this morning. Thank you, God, for the preached word that we will receive this morning. God, I ask that we will leave here differently than the way that we came in. God, please touch our hearts, touch our minds, touch our spirits, and allow us to be the hands and the feet of Jesus in this world, the one who you've called us to follow and to be disciples of. God, we thank you for your love. God, we ask for your covering this week. Um, and God, we thank you in advance um, for keeping us safe and for keeping us healthy. And we ask that we would encounter you in a new way um, like we've never encountered you before this week. Thank you, God, for all that you've done. And thank you, God, for all that you will do. All these things we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. This is a story of Jesus cleansing a leper from Mark chapter 1 verses 40 to 45. A leper came to him, begging him, and kneeling, he said to him, If you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was made clean. After sternly Warning him, he sent him away at once, saying to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But he went, when he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the word, so that Jesus could no longer go into a town openly, but stayed out in the country, and people came to him from every quarter. Friends, would you join me in the spirit of prayer and meditation? Let us pray together. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, you are without a doubt our rock and our Redeemer. Holy Spirit, do thy will, do thy will, Holy Spirit. In the loving and compassionate name of Jesus, we collectively pray. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Airing each Saturday morning on WFYI, the central Indiana NPR station, the radio show The Pulse marks itself by exploring unexpected corners of the health and science world. 
The Pulse takes pride in delivering stories, taking you behind the doors of operating rooms into the labs with some of the world's foremost scientists and back in time to explore life-changing innovations. Uh, Last week's episode explored the science of love where love was put under the microscope and into a brain scanner to understand where love begins and where it takes us. Neurologists and psychologists were interviewed so that we might get a better understanding of the feeling that can turn us into heroes, fools, or both. The love of Jesus shown in his act of mercy and compassion toward the leper could be considered as blurring those lines between heroic and foolish. Jesus, deeply rooted in his Jewish tradition, understood the fate of the leper according to Leviticus. The person who has the leper's disease shall wear torn clothes and let the hair of his head be disheveled. And he shall cover his upper lip and cry out, unclean, unclean. He shall live alone. His dwelling shall be outside the camp. These instructions make lepers the ultimate outsiders. They are symbols of those whom no one can help, of those without hope. A leper who was left alone to face his deteriorating future must have experienced excruciating isolation. The deep pain of leprosy is the growing realization that no one really cares. While there's a societal risk of even being seen near one with leprosy, the highly contagious nature of the disease leaves everyone beyond a suggested six feet distance. No one seems to care, but Jesus does. He breaks the proscenium of the leper's disease and communal dis-ease and isolation, and he goes even further. Jesus moves from love as inactive, as sympathy, to love as empathy and compassion. In touching the one with the leprous condition, his act of compassion comes with the risk of contracting leprosy. Jesus doesn't just help the leper, but it comes at the risk of becoming the leper. John Shea, the poet, beautifully captures the potential leper status of Jesus, the holy one becoming unholy, in his poem entitled A Prayer to the Pain of Jesus, saying, When crutches were thrown away, did Jesus limp after the running cripples? Did his eyes dim when Bartimaeus saw? Did life ebb in him when it flowed in Lazarus? When lepers leapt into new flesh, did scales appear upon the back of his hand? The Gospels say Jesus felt power go out from him, but neglect to say whether at that moment pain came in. Did the Son of God take on ungrown legs and dead legs and dead eyes in the terrifying knowledge that pain does not go away, only moves on? Jesus' compassion may have included experiencing within himself the total situation of the leper. God's love in Jesus does not heal by exterior contact, but by mutuality, compassion, the empathetic consciousness of others' distress with the desire to do something about it, to alleviate it, even if it risks his own wellness. Circumstances that would make most of us shy away because of the risk factors lead Jesus closer. Jesus seems to put the plight of others above the risks or costs associated to him. Jesus is willing to. No, when dare to touch the untouchable, he wants to. This is love in action. This is compassion. This is the willingness to suffer with another, to share the suffering of the other, to take it upon oneself. 
As Walter Brueggemann puts it, compassion constitutes a radical form of criticism for it announces that the hurt is to be taken seriously, that the hurt is not to be accepted as normal and natural, but is an abnormal and unacceptable condition for humanness. For Jesus, whether moved by compassion or being incensed by the personal physical pain or the emotional pain of isolation, something had to be done, no matter what the cost may be. Jesus' act of love and compassion begs the question of those who live and move and have their being in his name. That question, what are we willing to risk to be a part of another's wholeness? It's Princeton University professor and philosopher Peter Singer who talks about a man dressed to the nines, walking past some water when he notices a child is drowning. This man is wearing some very fancy clothes, Armani suit, Ferragamo loafers, and the question is, if you're the only one there and the only one capable of saving the child and there is no time to spare, should you, in fact, ruin your suit, ruin your shoes, and save the life? Let's say that would set you back about $3,000. Almost everyone would say, well, of course. But Singer turns it around. What if we could demonstrate that there's a child's life halfway around the world and that we could save one or 100 lives at the same cost, $3,000? Why weren't we willing to spend the $3,000? Obviously, the visceral nature and vividness and immediacy of the situation before our very eyes awakens in us a sense of responsibility, perhaps a greater responsibility than a more abstract or remote experience. But it does point us to the cost and responsibility to what Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. called the interrelated structure of reality and the inescapable network of mutuality. Audre Lorde notes, it is not our differences that divide us. It's our inability to recognize, accept, and celebrate those differences. Indeed, it is our refusal to accept and celebrate our interdependence and mutuality and the divine source of connection. When the Pope gets off an airplane in any country, he immediately kisses the earth. He does this in every land, for all the earth is sacred. There's a sameness, a mutuality to the different terrains of every country and her inhabitants. When the Dalai Lama arrives in a country, he announces to all who are there, everyone wants happiness and doesn't want suffering. It's what binds us together, the search for happiness and alleviation of suffering. This is true of all, so all are bound together. This is when we begin to realize that I am my neighbor. I am my brother's keeper. Such works of compassion can and should extend to efforts to change social structures and policies on behalf of, as well as advocate for, those who are poor, vulnerable, or treated unjustly. Our works of compassion should express the holistic view that embrace everything life in its entirety and all its dimensions and meanings and seeks to change all things for the better. This is compassion, an act of love, the deepest realization of the one source of all things, a fundamental communion of all things. Friends, compassionate people are moved to interact with others, to bear their burdens and sufferings and to alleviate them as possible, even when there is a cost involved. This is compassion. This is love. It is heroic 
and foolish, and it's faithful. Amen. As we come to the table, let us pray. Creator God, we come to your table and we are reminded of all the gifts you have to offer. May we rejoice and not forget they come from you. But we also come to this table with the weight of our worries and concerns, particularly during this pandemic era. The uncertainty, unrest, and even hopelessness weighing on us as we seek the light at the end of the tunnel. As we eat and drink of the bread and wine, may we remember that your power is absolute. Let us not hesitate to ask for your help your healing touch, and not take your power for granted. You are the light at the beginning, the middle, and the end of the tunnel. Let us join together and pray the prayer you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. I remember being told that to love as Jesus loves, to be compassionate as Jesus is compassionate, is naive and even impractical. Now, we just spent 12 minutes thinking, I hope, together about understanding the risks that are involved in being compassionate. So I'm not sure about naive, but if this table is a table of impracticality, then I'm impractical. But I dare I say that what we practice here is a foretaste and a possibility of hope that in that African tradition and that philosophy of Ubuntu that I am because we are and we are because I am, that idea of mutual interconnectedness that reminds us that this table is open because either it will accept everyone with me or it will accept no one. And so we pose that risky yet compassionate and loving and hopeful call that all are welcomed as God has welcomed because you will have me here with you or uh, none of us will gather as we celebrate the source of our mutual creation, sustaining and redeeming. To recognize again that our salvation is tied up in one another's salvation. It was on the night before Jesus showed the most full extent of his love that he gathered with his disciples in that upper room. He took a loaf of bread and after blessing it, he broke it and he gave it to them. And Jesus said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he gave thanks for the cup and he gave it to them. And Jesus said, this is the cup of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sin. Drink of it, all of you, in remembrance of me. For as often as we eat and drink, in remembrance of Christ, we proclaim his death until he comes, and we celebrate the transformation of all things through the power of love and compassion, as foolish 
as it may seem. When it comes, everything changes. Children can go to school. Women can start businesses to help support their families. Crops can grow. Neighbors can take care of each other. Markets can thrive. Families can be families. When water comes to a village, everything changes. Water is essential to life and the life of a village. We are giving makes projects like new wells in villages possible. Give to week of compassion and let love flow. And now may the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from the other. This we ask in Jesus' name. Friends, God loves you. I love you. Let's love one another. Amen.